Welcome, my readers, to another video. Hopefully, well, it's been two weeks since I did the last video, and for good reason. I wanted to see how well the video did, and it did surprisingly very well in the first couple of weeks. Hopefully, you guys like the new layout, and I'll be, and I hopefully I'll be able to make more videos like that. That being said, let's get into the story and see what happens. And uh, uh, investigations gone wrong. Scoots, where do you get all this? Applebloom asked, surprised that Scootaloo had even thought to bring anything. I kinda stole it from Twilight's library, Scootaloo mumbled. Scootaloo? Sweetie Belle huffed. We'll return it. Scootaloo brushed the concerns aside before adding, it's not like she's using any of it anyways. Dot dot dot. Sweetie Belle huffed at Scootaloo before the Pegasus shoved a camera on her head. Hey! She complicated, complicated, before Scootaloo also stuck a flashlight into her mouth. <laughs> yes, shove it all, shove it all into her mouth. You wear the cameras, Sweetie Belle, Scootaloo said, ignoring Sweetie's complaints and shoving the tape recorder into Apple Bloom's hair bow. And you hold the tape recorder. Scootaloo also handed Apple Bloom a flashlight, a bit smoother than she gave Sweetie Belle's to her. Oh, what a dick. But... She put the final flashlight back in her bag. I'll hold the third flashlight and try to get the ghosts to show themselves. Just be ready to take pictures when you think you see anything, sweetie Belle. And be ready to turn on the recorder, Apple Bloom. Both Willies nodded as their mouths were currently occupied by flashlights. Apple Bloom, Apple Bloom had the feeling Scootaloo had done this investigation so that they couldn't complain. Oh no, she managed to grapple out. Let's head inside. Scootaloo looked, uh, looked at the bo looming building, her smile fading ever so slightly. She hoped neither of her friends would pick up on it. Go ahead, Apple Bloom. Apple Bloom spat her flashlight on the ground. Kapili! Why are you sending me in first? You're scared. I knew it! Yet chicken. No! Denied Scootaloo. I just think that the pony with the equipment should go in first, just in case there's a ghost. But you're, you're the one who's forcing us to do this, so why aren't you in charge of the recorder? Apple Bloom huffs. Because I need to talk to the ghost. Duh. Scootaloo said simply, closing her eyes and sticking her nose up into the air. Then why don't you go in and have a little conversation first, Miss Ghost Whisperer? Apple Bloom scolded at Scootaloo turned around as they entered somewhat of a staring contest. Sweetie Belle? The two suddenly said in, and oh, let me do that again. Sweetie Belle! The two suddenly said in unison, ca causing the unicorn, unicorn to jump back a few inches. You go in first. They both turned their gaze towards the trembling husk of a pony that Sweetie Belle was slowly becoming. Sweetie Belle froze up at the idea of leading her friends into the, this scary new building, letting the flashlight fall to her hooves. She wanted to protest, but all she could manage was a small squeak. Scootaloo and Apple Bloom took this as an okay and started pushing their terrified friend towards the closet front door. To the closest front door. Scootaloo uh, grabbed the extra flashlight on the way there. About halfway through the short trip, she snapped out of it and ran immediately behind the other two, shaking from her tail to the tip of her mane. Come on, Sweetie Belle, you can do this, Scootaloo said. Sweetie Belle could only violently shake her head back and forth. Can you at least follow this in? Scootaloo asked. Finally feeling a little sympathy, Sweetie Belle hesitantly nodded in response. P -p Please don't leave me, me alone. She shuddered at all, crept forward. Scootaloo made it to the front door first and tried pushing it open. Wouldn't think about it. Scootaloo grunted. Can I get some help with this door? It's really heavy. The three ponies all leaned up against their rather large amusement door, pushing with all their might. I don't think it's moving, girls. 
Apple Bloom finally has after taking a slight break to get their strengths back. You're, we are just going to have to find another way in. Just then, a spectacular building blow, bolts of lightning streaked across the sky, accomplished a few minutes later with a low rumble and quick as their, as their force is blowing up the storm. Scootaloo, having given up the door entry, looked around the front of the building and entered the above walking around the entry of the structure. It looks like there might be another able to boost me up. Let me do that again. It looks like we might be able to boost one of us into that window over there. Scootaloo called back to the other two, pointing to a barren window frame that was just out of the reach of the other two. They could go remove what they could go remove whatever's in the way and open the door for the others. Great plans, Goots, Apple Boom said before walking over to the window and crouching. I'll boost you up into the window. But I'm Scootaloo started. Chicken. <laughs> Apple Boom smugly, smugly smiled as the visible shaken Pegasus. No! Scootaloo protested again, glancing around at Squiddy Bell. I just don't think I'll be able to reach the window with just you boosting me. Comma. Apple Bloom sighed and rolled her eyes before contacting her other visibly shaking friend. Come on, sweetie. Climb on my back so that we can get this over with. Sweetie Belle nodded, her head before slowly walking over. She nervously glanced around the building, par paranoid that something bad was about to happen and getting their feelings and getting the feeling that somebody was watching her. Take taking a deep breath, she climbed on top of Apple Bloom, who stood before asking, Did you think Scoots can reach Shin if she climbed on top of you? I can actually reach it myself, Sweetie Belle responded, realizing that she wanted to get this over with, uh, even more than the pony she was standing on. I guess I could go and open the door real quicky, <laughs> quicky like, <laughs> dot, dot, dot. I'm not sure I want to do this, oh my god. Well, what are you waiting for? Scootaloo gave a big smile, <laughs> go get the door, go get the door so we can go go something. Sweetie Belle gave Scootaloo a smile before turning towards the window. Oh, she smiled and bubbling almost immediately. Oh, God. She poked at the window to make sure that there wasn't any glass shard that she could accidentally fall onto. Looking into the room, she saw an overturned desk to her left as a wall of battered old filing cabinets to her right. On the ground, paper, papers were scattered everywhere, and and what looked to be the remains of a shattered uh, chair were strewn near the door. Out of loud words, the moonlight bled into the hallway, <laughs> where she could barely make out another room that looked like an office. She glanced outside before continuing how many windows over the front door was. After her final count, of three. She took a deep breath. <gasps> I'm going to run to the door and open it as quickly as I can. Sweetie called back to her friends on the ground. I don't want to be alone in there. She finished with a faint whisper, her voice failing as she realized what she just promised. Gulping, gripping the ledge, she gave a small push as a test jump, telling Apple Bloom that she might be, a, she might need a little more of a boost. Apple Bloom took the hint and gave a small jump, lifting Apple Bloom, lifting Sweetie Belle a few more inches, just enough for the filly to vault through the window, landing on the ground with a small thud. Judy Bell turned toward, turned back towards the window to hear her, to hear her Scootaloo shout, "Heads up!" Scootaloo took a step to the left before seeing a glint of hearing a clunk. Ice, and she noticed that the both of the flashlight and camera had been thrown to her. If you see anything before you get us in, be sure to take to snap a picture. She heard Scootaloo say, "We'll be waiting at the front door for you."
Judy picked up the camera hand uh, contraption and put it on, focusing her magic on the button that controlled the shutter. With just a twitch of her magical energy, it's, it could snap a photograph. Picking up the flashlight with her mouth, she bit down on the power button and took a few breaths and smile being penetrated the icky darkness of the asylum's halls. She knew that the small walk was going to be one of the scariest she had ever had. Almost without thinking about it, she started to hum the Cutie Mark Crusader theme song, a uh, theme they had created for the talent show. She didn't feel any safer, but at least the humming occupied her mind. She took a few caution steps towards the doorway and stopped before setting hoof into the hall. Oh, scary, scary, spooky boo. Picking her head through the doorway, she glanced left to see the double doors, one, one which hung half off the hinges and exposed the hospital's lobby. The other door seemed perfectly fine except for a small strip of glass that had long since been cracked on both doors. Looking in the room across from her, she saw yet another office scattered with papers. Only this with a broken light fickle flicture, the bulb scattered with still connected. Its eerie swaying almost was almost unnoticeable. It's just the wind. <laughs> yeah, wind. Wind. Because wind is it. <laughs> Sweetie Half realized herself, barely able to keep the flashlight steady at this point. To her right, she saw a large hallway ending to the small door and a turn. Light poured from each doorway on the right side of the hall. Where the wind, winded, r windled rooms must have been. A few doors still remained, uh, causing black splosh to interrupt the pattern of the light and dark. The moonlight illuminated a few chairs, and with a small beam of light cast by Sweetie's flashlight, showed a cone of dust as well as missing ceiling tiles as a mess of wires hanging from the ceiling. Sweetie Belle had been so engrossed in the broken down hallway that she stopped coming. Oh, I can't do this, oh, let me help me. <laughs> She could still hear the faint echo of somebody humming the theme. Dun dun dun. She hadn't made any noise for a few seconds, and the faint hum sent a chill down her spine. Your mind is playing tricks on you, sweet. <laughs> Cause minds do that. I hate my mind. She told herself out loud, just go and get the door open. I don't want to. She listened again, only humming the faint howl of the wind through the window she could she had climbed through. See? She said again, still not convincing herself. Finally, gathering gathering enough courage, she stepped out of the hall and turned to her left, towards the lobby, glance glancing behind her. She noticed nothing different with a small silver of com confidence. Gave the door a push, and the door slowly swung open. The a the edge hinged, cracking loudly. <coughs> Judy Bell clinged. As soon as the door as soon as the door quitted, she heard a small shriek behind her, swaying her head, swaying her head around. Then her nerves got the best of her as she reflexly snapped the fiction. I don't know, as she literally uh, uh, snapped the figure, <laughs> realizing that something about the scene was amiss. One of the wide open doors has closed slightly. The beam of light has changed the pattern. Sweetie's head sped up as she fruitlessly tried to convince herself that it was just the wind again. But wind doesn't do that. And there's no driving here. Turned around, she quickly dashed through the do open door and into the lobby. The room was bathed with moonlight thanks to the four windows that used to give a glimpse of the outdoors, but were now com covered in graffiti and dust. A reception uh, corner lay a reception corner lay uh, dormant to her right, an old telephone still sitting on top. To her left were a few torn up crotches crutches and a few chairs that were each missing one leg one leg oh my god the devil is here dun 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 Sudi had to admit that this area seemed much less creepy to the previous hallway because uh missing chairs it's not that creepy turning into turning 
Turning to the g ground entrance, they saw the doors had been b blocked off by a few overturned wheelchairs. The sign in relief, she put down her flashlight and set to work, carefully pushing the five wheelchairs out of the way. <coughs> <laughs> One more. <laughs> she just pushed the last chair of the, out of the way, and suddenly something caused her to stop in her tracks. Boom! A wheel is whispered, clawed into its way into the in, into her ear, and she swung her head around to find its source. Hearing another faint whisper, she realized that the sound what has been coming from the hall to her right. <laughs> No, <laughs> the one she had just left. Dun dun dun. She glanced down the hall to the figure standing slightly in the dark. Sweetie Belle's heart pounding. Kaboom, 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 kaboom. And the flashlight beams was practically woven, and she tried her best to hold it steady. She wanted to scream, but it was. But she was perfectly uh, petrified on the spot. She didn't know what to do. What do I do? After a few moments of silence, she noticed a familiar purple tail and an orange coat, and her flashlight kept flashing back and forth across the silent figure. Immediately, her fear turned to anger as she realized that her friend was up to. That's not funny! You almost scared me to death! So just stop! Just. Stand in there and come help me with the door! Scootaloo Sco stayed in the same position, fading away from Sco Sweetie Bells and not making a sound. Sco Scootaloo? She said again, as the pony refused to budge. It was just that Sweetie Bell realized Scootaloo was, has been standing in the dark while she should have had the flashlight on her. Also, her friend was missing her saddlebags. Scootaloo, you're Creepy me, bro! Come on! Sweetbell stuttered down the hall. What? She heard Scootaloo respond. Only the voice didn't came from the distance she was looking, but from behind the main doors. How am I doing that from over there? Eep! Sweetie Bell's voice creeped as she turned her head towards the main doors quickly. Oh, God, what the... <laughs> then, back to the hallways, the figure was gone. Scooty Bell shouted, dropping her flash and running over to the door, pulling it off wide open, despite the impossible weight, seeing her complication on the other side. Other side, Sweetie Bell ran behind them, shivering uncontrollably. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. What happened? Scootaloo was at a Sweetie Bell as she shivered on the ground next to them, holding her tail close to her. You, 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 you. Sweetie pointed at Scootaloo before pausing. I? You were there! Sweetie Belle practically yelled, and you were there! And you were there! <laughs> Pointing inside the building, but we're out here. The ghosts know. Don, Don, pause for dramatic effect. Do you think we should get on home now, Scootaloo? Apple Bloom asked with a bit of a frown on her face. No way! Now I've got to see their ghosts for myself. Scootaloo replied, racing into the Decepts building and gazed in awe in the rundown lobby. <gasps> it looks the same, but just run down. Oh my god! Scootaloo! Apple Bloom scolded the Pegasus before turning her quivering friend. I promise we'll never make you go off alone again. Here, give me the camera. I can hold both. And you can stay right by my side. Sound good? Oh, Apple Bloom. I, I, I don't know what to say, but... Do you don't have to say anything. You don't have to say anything, sweetie. Except I just want you to be safe. But, Apple Bloom... Sweetie, it's okay. They both stare long in, the, uh, in their eyes as they both smile, happy. Sweet, Sweetie Belle started to blush, but Apple Bloom just continues to smile. She let out a giggle and, who it's about to get hot in here. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, I got off topic. Sweetie Belle had a few tears in her eyes as she noticed. Nodded. She gave up her 
Nah, she had given up her touch tough act and just wanted to go home. But she saw, but she knew Apple Bloom would never let leave Scootaloo alone in the abandoned asylum, insane asylum. Slowly but surely, Apple Bloom helped her up before taking the camera and stepped it, strapped it on herself. Just snap a picture when I say say to. Okay. I can't do that while I'm holding a flashlight. Apple Bloom said before stepping inside herself. Come on, let's go amuse Scootaloo while we get. Why, so we can get home. And that show does it for part two of Investigations Gone Wrong. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this reading as much as I enjoyed reading it to you. Uh, I haven't been gone that long and I won't be gone that much more. I have gotten much more of a hobby. I have, I've been learning programming as well as learning how to draw again because i need to learn how to draw because i want to make you guys some pretty awesome videos that hopefully you will enjoy even more that being said thank you so much for watching my readers and i'll see you in the next episode of whatever i make till then sayonara